sapiens is a name given to the modern human species. We've been around for about 200,000 years, and before us were many predecessors, including Homo erectus, including Neanderthals. By most accounts, human beings started off in Africa. There weren't a whole lot of us. Just maybe a few hundred thousand individuals moving from place to place, essentially hunting and gathering, and competing with other wild animals and other humans for survival. Over a freakishly long period of time, somewhere around 75 to 80,000 years, human beings began to actually migrate outside of the continent of Africa. The reasons why human beings started trying to get out of the continent is because they were looking for ways of surviving. In particular, they were looking for food. There used to be very large mammals that existed, and many of these animals were essentially easy targets for good pack hunters, like human beings essentially, that would get together and use their top-notch communication skills and their big brains to trap large monsters and then feed their families for a little while until they had to move on trying to find more food. Long story really short, these animals started to die off, and as they did, other animals went extinct trying to survive themselves, but human beings needed to migrate in order to find new ways to get access to food. Now, another reason why human beings may have migrated is simply because of their curiosity and their natural adventuresomeness. Human beings like to try to figure out new things and new ways of doing things. We're very creative, we're extremely adaptable, and these are some of the things that made it possible for us to migrate outside of the continent. Over even more time, a huge amount of time, by about 30 to 14,000 BCE, that is before the Common Era, we start to see human beings living in North America. And from there, it didn't take them very, very long to trickle down into South America. So that by about 14,000 to 10,000 BCE, around the same time as the end of the last ice age, we see where every single continent on Earth had some human population on it, except for Antarctica. So what is it that gives human beings their edge? I mean, why is it that we were able to adapt and grow as well as we have and in the way that we have? Well, there are several key factors we're gonna consider. And the first of these key factors is fire. All right, so I'm not sure how many of you guys have seen the new Jungle Book movie, but they talk about the red flame or the red flower. And one thing that really absolutely does separate humankind from every other animal is our ability to create and manipulate fire. Now, the reason why this is such a big deal is because we use it to keep ourselves warm during the ice age, to keep ourselves well fed with nutritious and better tasting food. Being able to cook our food led to better nutrition, better health, and less of our bodies having to digest so much food. If you think about cows, for example, they have all these different stomachs. There are four stomachs for a cow, what the heck? People only have one stomach because we don't need to do as much towards digesting food since we are always gonna be cooking our food before we eat it. These types of biological innovations enable us to have bigger brains and even make us smarter than we already were. So fire really did play a pivotal role in our development. It also protects us from wild animals that are basically scared of being burned up. So if you are trying to survive against a pack of hungry wolves and you've got a piece of wood that's set on fire, you have that much more chance to scare animals away. Plus, they were less likely to attack campfires than they would have been to attack people who are just out in the open trying to live off the land and the elements especially in areas that were affected by the ice age. Human beings really owe fire to their survival and their ability to adapt, which in turn led them to use stone tools. The Paleolithic period is marked by heavy use of tools that were mainly used from stone, which makes sense since Paleolithic means Stone Age. But when you really think about it, people were using more than just stones to make their materials. They were using needles made of bones to sew up fur so they can keep warm. So next time you decide you want to go jerry rig something up, think about this. Human beings have been doing this for about 200,000 years. Something else that happened to us during this Paleolithic time period, in particular between the last ice age and the invention of agriculture around 8,000 BCE, is the domestication of the dog, man's best friend. Believe it or not, all dogs come from an ancestral dog, which is essentially an offshoot of a wolf. So the way this works out is some wolves 
start to develop a gene that enabled them to tolerate human presence. They wouldn't get so scared, they would actually be able to stay around and maybe even eat some of the scraps. These wolves were more likely to survive and give birth to other wolves that were just as tolerant as they were to human presence. When you combine that with human curiosity, you can only imagine where some of these human beings saw these animals eating their trash, they might have even tried to offer it food. You can imagine that dog domestication really wasn't that far off. And eventually, people started to use selective breeding to not only breed dogs that were tolerant to human beings, but those who had good dog traits that were more willing to help with things that humans needed. This is where you start to see the selective breeding lead to new breeds of dogs, many of which we've helped to create over the last few hundred years. The Paleolithic period was known as the Old Stone Age, then the Neolithic period is known as the Age of Agriculture. Neolithic does mean New Stone Age, but really we're not thinking of Neolithic Revolution as something that had anything to do with the use of stones or an age. What we're thinking about it being is the invention of agriculture, which takes place over a huge amount of time. In fact, normally in every other revolution you're going to study in world history, you're going to talk about revolution as being a sudden and drastic change in something, whether that's a new government, or whether that is a uh, the industrial revolution where people started using manufactured goods for the first time. But in this case, the sudden drastic change actually happened over a period of about 5,000 years depending on where in the world you're looking. I would say this is the biggest revolution. And if you think about the span of human history over 200,000 years, 5,000 years really is a pretty small fraction of that. The reason why Neolithic Revolution, the invention of agriculture, is the most important of all revolutions is because we couldn't be who we are today without the invention of agriculture. And that's not to say that everything that came from agriculture was just good. A lot of it was actually pretty bad as well, such as social stratification. But we'll get into that a little bit later. What I want you guys to think about when you think about Neolithic Revolution is, I want you to realize that certain areas are, are home to certain types of agricultural practice. And so there's a few things you need to know in terms of the crops that were being grown as well as animals that were being domesticated. In the Middle East, it was wheat, cattle, pigs, sheep, and goats. When I'm talking about the Middle East, I'm specifically talking about Sumeria, all right? This Mesopotamia, uh, Mesopotamia and the Sumerian civilization that existed along the Tigris Euphrates rivers. In Asia, it would have been rice and millet. Africa was millet, sorghum, and yams. Central America was maize, which is their way of saying corn, as well as squash. In South America, potatoes and guinea pigs. How cute! Now, it's important to know that when we talk about agriculture, agriculture and civilization is not the same thing. Civilization comes with or includes complex institutions and, and buildings and, and the ability to write things down, written language, and all these other things that play in that aren't necessarily requirements for living in a village and doing agriculture. Another thing you gotta think about too is that many of your first agriculturalists were still nomads. You had slash and burn agriculture where people would cut down forests, they would burn the remaining brush and debris, and then they would farm on what was left until it didn't sustain any more land, and then they'd move on and repeat the process. Pastoralism is yet another form of nomadic agriculture in which you follow herds of animals over a huge mass space, basically going where there's food for them to graze. Abraham from the Bible is a, is a great example of a pastoral nomad. These guys really didn't have permanent settlement. Most of them still moved from place to place. They may stay put for maybe a, a year or two before they move around, and they may also follow cyclic patterns so that they are traveling kind of in circles along the land for huge amounts of time and not really leaving the region, but they're still moving around from place to place. We haven't really settled down quite yet, except in maybe a few cases, a few villages such as Katohuyuk, sometimes called Chattelhuyuk, and the city of Jericho. I also want you to think about how these cities and villages could not exist without a very close water source. In terms of Neolithic tools, some of the materials these guys were using, some of the things they were building, 
they had discovered a new metal known as copper. Now, one thing you gotta know about copper is that it's pretty malleable and kind of soft, and so it really didn't make the best tools, it really didn't make the best weapon. But they also discovered that if you mix copper and tin, and I don't know how in the world they discovered this, oh my goodness, how in the world are they so smart? You mix the two together, you get bronze, which is a lot harder, and can actually be way more durable and used for more productive purposes, such as warfare and the plow. You know, in other words, you can plow the ground and now turn the dirt around and use it for longer than most traditional slash and burn agriculturalists would use it. So because of the invention of the plow, people can finally stay put for longer periods of time and even on a permanent basis. Eventually, we're also gonna discover iron, which is gonna be a cheaper and more available alternative to bronze, and it's gonna help us out even more. Now, we keep talking about weapons, and it's important to know one thing that I do want you guys to understand is that warfare increased with agriculture. One of the offshoots or one of the consequences of Neolithic the revolution the invention of agriculture is that not only do you have some of the things I mentioned earlier like social stratification which is a class system you have a uh, social elite and you know essentially the haves and the have-nots which included historically the majority of people the haves ate really good all right and were extremely fit and healthy and didn't have as much disease and the have-nots which is everyone else more or less literally shrank in size on average to about five and a half feet and only consumed high calorie carbohydrates like wheat and rice and things like this the diverse amounts of food they were getting as hunter gatherers which include tons of proteins and fruits and roots and stuff that's very very nutritionally sound actually went down is what caused people to shrink in size but you also see an increase in warfare because well simply put if you lived in a village and your village underwent famine and nobody was able to eat but the village right down a, a few miles over were doing just fine and did have food it comes down to your survival and if you're going to starve out to the point of death and you can't feed your children all of a sudden and you can't feed your friends and you watch your parents die then as a survival mechanism you're going to pick up your weapons and go next door and take them out and take their food so while agriculture is one of the most important things ever and our lifestyle today couldn't be had without it it's also worth noting that our lifestyle today has only really existed for about 120 years or so and that before that things were pretty bad about two out of every five or six kids that were born would die up until the 1800s no matter where you lived so things got better because of agriculture in some parts of the world today but there's still a lot of people out there including my boy Jared Diamond who believes perhaps that agriculture was a mistake nevertheless it's here to stay and that's the first part of understanding world history Hope you like my video. Like, share, and subscribe for more world history and geography videos.